the news, United Arab Emirates lifts visa ban on Nigerian travelers after almost one year. UK warship arrives Nigeria to improve maritime security. And UNICEF says Nigeria lost $100 billion to armed conflict in 10 years. Thank you for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Simisola Adigun. It is good news for Nigerians as after almost one year, the United Arab Emirates UAE has lifted the visa ban placed on Nigerian travelers. According to a statement by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Ajuri Ingilali, this development follows a historic agreement between President Bola Tinubu and President of the United Arab Emirates, Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, on Monday. With this historic agreement, both Etihad Airlines and Emirates Airlines are set to immediately resume flight schedules into and out of Nigeria without any further delay. The statement also adds that as negotiated between the two heads of state, this immediate restoration of flight activity through these two airlines and between these two countries does not involve any immediate payment by the Nigerian government. A Royal Navy warship, HMS Trent, has arrived in Lagos aimed at aiding the flight, the fight rather, against illegal activities including piracy and illicit trafficking in the sub-region. This is its second visit to the country, made in a bid to help deliver capacity training and support maritime security in the region. The ship's commanding officer, Commander Tim Langford, said the ship's three-month deployment to West Africa is part of efforts to ensure a long-term solution to maritime insecurity across the region. HMS transmission will also support West African allies, helping countries to develop capability to fight illegal crimes at sea and ensure they can play an effective role in bringing stability to wider West Africa. The United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, has released a new study which details the devastating economic impact of the ongoing conflict in northeast Nigeria. The study by the Child Rights Agency indicates that in the past 10 years, Nigeria has lost approximately $100 billion to armed conflict in the northeast of the country. Our correspondent, Emeka Hamako, files in this report from Abuja. Nigerians living in the Northeast have endured varying levels of armed conflict since 2009, when the jihadist insurgent group Boko Haram announced its goal to form a province of the Islamic State in the states of Adamawa, Borno, and Yobe. This led the federal government to declare a state of emergency in 2013 and launch a police and military response in the region. To evaluate the economic cost of this conflict in Nigeria, the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, has released the report saying Nigeria has recorded nothing less than $100 billion loss in the last 10 years due to the conflict in the northeastern part of the country. So the findings of this report conducted by Frontier Economics on behalf of UNICEF quantify the ongoing conflict devastating economic and human costs, a loss to the largest economy on the continent that reaches over $100 billion for uh, a period of 10 years. Speaking of the launch of the report in Abuja, UNICEF representatives said over 6,400 grave violations were verified by the United Nations in Nigeria between 2017 and 2021. This is a critical factor that we definitely see that is being addressed in, in, in the, the Borno state, in the other three Bay states, but also an agenda from the federal government to really stabilize this part of uh, the critical situations so that the other agenda can move ahead and can be consistent and hopefully sustainable. To work together uh, to make that difference and we look forward to the continuing, uh, continuing the collaboration with uh, our leaders here in Nigeria and with the UN. 
Representing the governor of Borno State, Adamo Abbas, said the report should also consider the effect of grave violations against children as it has a devastating impact on human lives. I was expecting them to also look at the other side of the cost, apart from the economic cost and deaths, the long term, which is the impact on children of tomorrow that are coming up without due education, without parental care, without moral, moral guidance, they are going to be a problem in the future because they are the leaders of the tomorrow. Children are the future of humanity. And if we get it wrong, I don't know why we are getting into According to the Child Agency, even with the reduction of the effects of conflict in the next 10 years, Nigeria is still expected to face profound cumulative losses, which prevents it from achieving its full potential. The agency therefore called on government agencies to prioritize peace and the protection of children's rights to ensure a brighter future for Nigeria. Mary Kanu, TV360, Nigeria. Well, still on the UNICEF's report on Nigeria's monetary loss to insecurity in the northeastern part of the country, security expert Hashim Salaudin says the high level of insecurity in the country has caused depletion of the nation's funds. Speaking to TV360 in Nigeria, Hashim said that uh, the economic development and national growth has been hampered due to the high monetary allocation to finance effective counter-terrorism in the country. Hashim urged the new administration to be committed to towards ensuring national security and see to it that displaced citizens are catered for. At the time in this country, uh, the counterterrorism effort was taking about 25% of our national budget. And that in itself uh, suggests that uh, a conflict of uh, uh, interest and uh, the activities of uh, conflict merchants uh, also played out very significantly. Uh, we lost so much money. And yes, uh, because uh, there are people uh, who were smiling to the bank uh, for those periods, uh, it actually then further uh, backtrack uh, developmental uh, efforts and initiative and yes, ran out into uh, the situation we were. Uh, perhaps those money is uh, if we hadn't uh, had security related uh, issues uh, we would have invested them into agriculture education healthcare and then uh, perhaps uh, other uh, areas of infrastructure uh, but of course uh, because we have to uh, put them into a more priority area of uh, issue of security uh, then of course it gave us that uh, little bit of a setback so yes I, I agree with that particular report and then of course um, the question that then should be asked is all of those monies that went into counterterrorism effort a number of them went into the procurement of platforms into armed production pro, pro, uh, 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 procurement how much uh, have we gotten in terms of uh, return on investment uh, until very recently before the Afghan administration. Uh, of course, the Presidential Committee on the Procurement of Arms uh, also revealed uh, the amount of money uh, that went into arms procurement that were literally completely missing. What we need to do is to find the best way to develop and strengthen accountability mechanism in public institution. That for me will be fundamental. How do we institutionalize transparency and not ad hoc transparency measure, method or measure that we put out there? We must institutionalize it so that if somebody is taking any money at any quarter, it naturally triggers and that in itself can actually disrupt the entire value chain. That kind of institutional uh, strengthening and effort uh, must also be found. Citizens have roles to play in profiling information that will be processed into intelligence. Uh, intelligence led counter terrorism efforts are the only way to be able to reduce the amount of money that we spend. So, if citizens know that they want to reduce corruption in any public domain, then they should offer information. Whistleblower policy must be strengthened, must be popularized, citizens must participate, and that is the only way to get us out of this problem. The Lagos State Police Command has paraded 13 alleged criminals, including a man accused of impersonating the Commissioner of Police. During the parade, the police spokesman Benjamin Houdain told journalists at the police officers' mess in Ikeja that the suspects were linked to different crimes, including armed robbery, unlawful possession of arms, 
cultism, among other crimes, in Lagos State. Houdain said the suspects were apprehended after Operation Flush was initiated by the police last week to fight crime in this state. So we have a total of seven, um, 13, 13 suspects here today who have been involved in various criminal activities, including armed robbery, unlawful possession of controlled substances, impersonation, defilement, armed robbery. And we also have an array of um, arms, weapons, ammunition, and other exhibits. First, I would like to talk about the case of impersonation. Um, there is somebody arrested is here. Nwagu Emmanuel, who parades himself as a commissioner of police. And to make his claim authentic, he also has a fake ID card of the commissioner of police. Everything is on display there, you can see. And um, he actually came into the police headquarters and um, was about to facilitate or request the release of a hardened criminal in our custody. Of course, he introduced himself as commissioner of police. And that was as far as he could convince us, Commissioner of Police. Further questioning, where are you serving, and some other things. He gave himself away, and he has been arrested. Investigation reveals that he has been doing this for quite some time. So only God knows how many civilians he has been able to convince that he's a police officer and get away with some unscrupulous things. We also have another interesting case of impersonation. This was reported to us by the Nigerian Bar Association, Ekbe Branch. And they reached out to us to let us know about a, a, about somebody that has been calling himself a lawyer for years now. He would always appear in court, he would always wear the robe and have law books. And non-suspecting uh, Nigerians would always approach him for, for whatever legal advice or services they need. But we have been able to arrest him today. His name is Ibrahim Bello. He was actually arrested in court with his robe looking like a real lawyer. We have also been able to arrest a woman, a lady, Ganiat Oni, 40 years old, in the Ibubu area of Ikorodu. Um, she sells drugs, hard drugs. Um, she was arrested with quite an array of these drugs, 97 wraps of Colos, 22 wraps of Loud, some mixture of Loud and Arizona, and some other hard drugs and found in her possession was 271,600 naira. Nigeria's first indigenous chartered accountant, Akintola Williams, has died at the age of 104. The late Williams is reputedly the first sub-Saharan African to become a chartered accountant after he passed the qualifying examination of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales in 1949. He also played a leading role in the development of the accountancy profession in the country by facilitating the establishment of the Association of Accountants in Nigeria, which metamorphosed into the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, and was also involved in establishing the Nigerian Stock Exchange, now the Nigerian Exchange Group. Vice President Kashim Shatima says Nigeria needs 21 trillion naira to overcome its national housing deficit. The Vice President made the statement in Wamako, Sokoto State, while laying the foundation for the construction of 500 housing units by the Sokoto State Government. He also said the giant strides of Governor Ahmed Aliyu within a short period of 100 days in office is highly commendable and worthy of emulation. Nigeria has a 28 million housing deficit and we need 21 trillion naira to meet our housing needs. So the giant airport of the Sokoto State Government in its first 100 days in office is not only commendable but it is worthy of emulation by other states across the land and base of this country. I want to commend Governor Ahmed Adil Sokoto for, standing, for starting so well beyond the housing efforts. The administration has constructed so many urban roads and completed 
a project, an overhead bridge, a flyover that he inherited from the past administration. It's a testimony to his developmental impetus and pride and commitment and passion and patriotism that he did not abandon projects that he made on ground. I will take a break here, but still to come, reps call for synergy among security agencies to curb oil theft. Details of the story and more when News Now returns. Welcome back, a recap of our top stories tonight. After almost one year, the United Arab Emirates, UAE, has lifted the visa ban placed on Nigerian travelers. In a statement by the Special Advisor, TV President on Media and Publicity, Ajuri Ingelale, this development follows a historic agreement between President Bola Tinubu and President of the United Arab Emirates, Mohammed bin Zayed Al Anayan, on Monday. The historic agreement will see the immediate resumption of both Etihad Airlines and Emirates Airlines into and out of Nigeria. We also told you that a Royal Navy warship, HMS Trent, has arrived in Lagos, aimed at aiding the fight against illegal activities, including piracy and illicit trafficking in the sub-region. This is its second visit to the country, made in a bid to help deliver capacity training and support maritime security in the region. The ship's commanding officer, Commander Team Langford, said the ship's three-month deployment to West Africa is part of efforts to ensure a long-term solution to maritime insecurity across the region. In case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV or log on to our website on www.tv316nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria, on Facebook or at TV360 online. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if this thing he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the Construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app. If you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, and it's true. <laughs> of course, I told you. And it's time for business news on with Mary Kano. Over to you, Mary. 
Many thanks to Ms. Ella. Welcome to Business News. Raising concerns over the rate of crude oil theft in the country, the House of Representatives has called on the federal government to take decisive action to curtail a deeper fiscal crisis due to dwindling revenues from the oil and gas sector endangered by crude oil theft. Speaking during a hearing by the House, Speaker Tajuddin Abbas assured that the federal government is ready to address the situation for the growth of the oil sector. Crude oil theft has drastically hampered the growth of Nigeria's oil production. It is reported that Nigeria loses between 5% to 30% of its crude oil production on a daily basis, unfortunately. Data available through the yearly reports of Nigeria Executive Industries Transparency Initiative, NIETI, show that Nigeria's oil production declined from 2.51 million barrels per day in 2005 to 1.77 million barrels per day in 2020. NETI reports also show that 619 million barrels of crude valued at over 46 billion US dollars were stolen in the period of 2009 to 2020, as the case may be. Nigeria has continually failed to meet its daily production quota as set by the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. The Amana, the act, this act of sabotage and the breach on our national security and the sovereignty is carried out on daily basis, make a recapture of our pride as a nation and the even a mockery of our security and intelligence agencies. It is an upfront on government and its institutions, which must be tackled without further delay. It is in the light of this that the House constituted this committee and is determined to bring this ugly trend to an end. Otherwise, there may be no future for our remaining children who have not yet dropped to other countries in search of survival. The United States Chamber of Commerce has extended an invitation to President Bola Tinubu to participate in the closing bell ceremony at the National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotations on Wednesday, September 20th. According to a statement issued on Monday, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce announced that the bell ringing event where President Tinubu will coincide with the 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly. The ceremony is intended to symbolize the importance of economic connections between the United States and Nigeria. We'll take a break now, but up next is Stock Market Report. Stay with us. It is the first trading day of the week and the first day of poor trading. Investors in Nigeria's equities market have lost about 464 billion naira. The NGX is down 1.24% and has also dropped to the 60,000, 67,000 basis points. Now, this poor trading is the end result of profit taken from stocks like Learn Africa and Nasken, as both equities recall that the most losses to top the red counter, while well, as expected with a negative market breadth of 43 losers against 16 gainers, 520 million shares exchange hands in 9,914 deals. Now, for a select global stocks, it's a bullish trade day for investors in the UK and US, as both stocks ended at its highest in nearly a month after China exposed stocks got a boost from data, which pointed to stabilization in the world's second largest economy. But that's the stock market report. Simisala, back to you. Thank you, Mary, for the report. And on the global scene, the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, is set to launch the joint platform for advancing cybersecurity in West Africa and Abuja on Tuesday, September 12, 2023. This announcement was put on the West African blog's social media handles and website on Monday. According to ECOWAS, this initiative is dedicated to enhancing regional cyber diplomacy, safeguarding the critical infrastructure, combating cybercrime and upholding data sovereignty. Well, up next is Entertainment Report on News Now.
it is a double celebration for the Inzers as popular Nollywood actors Stan and Blessing Inzer have announced that they are expecting their first baby while marking the second anniversary of their wedding. The Bimin duo took to their Instagram pages to reveal the news captured in a video of them all dressed up in traditional attire, revealing Jessica's baby bump. The couple who got married in an intimate wedding ceremony in 2021 say their marriage was the best decision they ever made. Meanwhile, overjoyed fans have flooded their pages with congratulatory messages. Congratulations to the NZs. Popular Nigerian actress Moya Lawal, who has been trending on social media ever since a video of her making out with an unknown man went viral, has threatened to sue those behind the release of the video for criminal breach of privacy. Dismissing rumors of intentionally leaking the video for publicity, the actress in a message on our official Instagram page clarified that the said man in the video was her ex fiance and the video was shared without her consent. Moyo has, however, vowed to get to the root of the matter and take legal action against anyone responsible for sharing the video. And that's all on the entertainment segment of News Now. Omomi, Seriki, TV360, Lagos. Finally on sports, Australian police have said that they are willing to help Spanish investigators probing sexual assault allegations leveled against Spain's outgoing football supreme Louis Rubiales. Rubiales was widely condemned after footage emerged showing him kissing Spanish player Jenny Hermoso on the lips following the team's victory in the Women's World Cup final in Sydney last month. Spanish public prosecutors had launched a lawsuit against the Spanish Football Federation president after Hermoso filed a complaint at the country's national court last week. The 46-year-old insisted that the kiss was consensual. The Abonyi state governor, Francis Furo has condemned the attack on Sebastian Owe, the referee for the final match of the 2023 Governor's Cup competition on Sunday on Sunday, the referee was said to have been chased all over the stadium as he ran for dear life over alleged officiating in the match. The attack was finally quelled after the governor intervened in rescuing the referee from the mob, which overpowered the security men trying to protect him. And that's our bulletin on news now. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.